My sterling single, fitting the check valve adapter, making a rear mounting plate and painting some of the parts. I returned to Blackgate's engineering today to buy a third check valve because I only bought two. And with the help of a few copper washers and some Loctite 542, I fitted the check valves into the adapter unit that I made. The inlet to the check valves all need to point downwards, hence the washers for packing. Plus, I didn't want the check valves to go too far into the adapter block and restrict the flow of the water. Now it's time to fit the adapter block, complete with three check valves, to the original check valve. And this is the check valve that I removed the ball from. Time for a quick check to make sure that the foot plate fits OK, and indeed it does. Below the drag beam at the rear of the engine were a couple of these metal plates to support the water piping to and from the axle pump and at the other side there was a plate with a connection for the hand pump. I'm going to discard these metal plates but I need to keep the piping. In this clip I'm unsoldering the copper pipe from the brass plate and I'm using a very useful small blowtorch. This was sent to me by a friend who I haven't heard from for a while by the name of Jerry. The small amount of heat given off by the blowtorch is just absorbed by the part that it's unsoldering. At this stage I'd like to mention that this is not silver solder, it's soft solder. And as these parts don't get hot, soft solder is okay for a job like this. When I finish the piping for the engine, I'm going to soft solder all the pipe ends into specially made adapters that I will specially make. And these adapters will be bolted to the metal plate that I'm currently fitting underneath the drag beam. This is a piece of brass and it's one eighth of an inch thick. I've cut it to length and I've marked the positions for the existing holes. Well, two of them anyway, which should be okay. How did I get the holes in the right position? I held the brass plate in close proximity to the holes and scratched some marks with a scriber. What I call my calibrated eye and years of experience does help though. I drilled two holes in the piece of brass and then I countersunk them. And as you can see from this clip, the part fits perfectly. And it's almost painting time. First of all though, I'm removing the water gauge from the boiler backhead. I've cleaned up the firehole door because I'm going to paint this also. And I did this by using a small piece of emery cloth. The footsteps that I removed from the engine yesterday because I need to paint them have been in a pot of cellulose thinners overnight. And now the paint's just fallen off. Using a toothbrush also helps the process along. This is the steam blower pipe. It goes from a valve on the turret to the hollow stay that goes all the way through the boiler and has a blower nozzle connected to it inside the smoke box. I'm about to paint the back head, so I need the pipe out of the way and I need to clean it up as well. The painting begins with the turret and the valves. I'm not painting the brass parts, I'm just painting the body of the valves. The paint that I'm using for this job is HMG Satin Black, and even though it's called Satin Black, it's slightly more matte than some other Satin Black paints. I really like this paint, it's beautiful to brush on as well as spray on. I'm no expert on the formulations of paint, but this smells like an enamel paint to me. I'm giving the brass check valves a coat of etching primer. And as usual, this is Phoenix Precision Paints Single Pack Etch Primer. This is aerosol paint that I sprayed into the cap, and it's easy to apply with a brush. A different treatment is required for the firehole door because this gets very hot indeed. And because it gets so hot, I'm painting the firehole door with a special heat-resistant paint. This paint doesn't brush quite so well as the other stuff, but the good thing about it is it's going to look a bit patchy. And when I look at a picture of the full-size firehole door, mine should be similar to the one on the backhead picture here. I was very tempted to try and get a finish like this on the backhead, but I don't think it would look good on a model. In any case, here's a shot of the backhead of my Sterling single, and it's entirely different to the full-size anyway. All that's left is a bit more painting, so I've composed some music for this, and this tune is called I'm Really Pleased That My Cold Is Getting Better, and today I can even smell the paint. That's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.